Everywhere you look in the Mobile area, there's water. It's a big source for jobs, money, recreation, and education. From the Mobile River to Mobile Bay, all the way to the Gulf of Mexico, water impacts everyday life in a big way. And now there's one place where you can learn all about the Gulf of Mexico and its impact. The Gulf Quest National Maritime Museum in downtown Mobile. It was designed to look like a ship. Uh, that's pointed towards the Gulf of Mexico like it's heading out to sea. And the sights and sounds are unlike any other museum in the world. The quest to create this unique destination started more than a decade ago, and the museum's executive director, Tony Zadro, says the museum has been well worth the wait. We have finally reached the point where we're able to bring people into the building, and hopefully they'll understand why it took as long as it took, and why there's so, there, there was so much effort required to make something like this come to fruition. Hello and welcome to Gulf Quest, the National Maritime Museum of the Gulf of Mexico. I'm Devin Walsh. And I'm Peter Albrecht, and we are in the beautiful lobby of Gulf Quest, the only museum in the world to tell the maritime history of the Gulf of Mexico in such a fascinating way. Absolutely. You've seen this building being built for years, but we can tell you it is worth the wait. So sit back and relax, and for the next 30 minutes, we're going to give you a sneak peek inside. So come on board and enjoy the fun. The museum is huge, 90,000 square feet. And on the outside, it looks like a ship headed out to Mobile Bay. And of course, on the inside, it's a big container ship. Certainly, the designers have paid attention to every single detail. From the air, the Gulf Quest National Maritime Museum stands out along the Mobile Riverfront. The building is unlike anything else surrounding it. You know, they really went to the nth degree because once the, the building took on the, the design of a ship or the look of a ship, then even the external stairwells for fire escape kind of became l like lifeboats, if you will, uh, as part of the design element. The maritime theme is carried out on the inside, too. A five-story container ship welcomes you to the exhibits, and it actually sits on water. This container ship is meant to look realistic. It's real size. We have water surrounding the hull, and the container ship really provides us with the uh, gallery space that we need. So we have three levels in the containers and five decks on the superstructure on the far south side of the building. After you board the cargo ship, this is where you come. This is cargo deck 1A, and if you're interested in navigation, this floor is for you. Don't you think, Peter? 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 <laughs> Sorry, I was learning how to use the nautical chart here, and really this is what this floor is all about. It's about the history of navigation and how ships are built and how they've been propelled over the years. There is a lot to do on this floor, and you could take a lot of time just right here. There's so much to discover inside the museum, we decided to get a little help from some young explorers. Members of the Pierce family from Mobile accepted our tour invitation. The first stop for Brielle, TJ, Wyatt, and Mom Melinda was Deck 1A. They had a blast with some of the first interactive exhibits that visitors encounter. 12-year-old Wyatt tested his strength on propellers take power. Turn the crank to spin the propeller at 60 RPMs. How much more power do you think it will take to make the propeller turn twice as fast? He turned the propeller 180 revolutions per minute, or RPMs. Nine-year-old brother TJ jumped in next. He didn't match Big Brother's power. <laughs> TJ's next stop, an exhibit called Set Sail. He joined forces with younger sister, Brielle. The idea is to rotate the table enough to make the wind blow the sailboat across the table. This exhibit brought cheers and smiles. Wyatt moved from muscle power to brain power. He took on full steam ahead. I'm trying to get the wheel to go in a circle constantly without any mess ups. It didn't take him long to find the perfect rhythm to use steam power to rotate the paddle wheel. This exhibit allowed the children to learn about the innovation of steamboats and later on their museum tour they learned to pilot other ships, some bigger and faster. Well, we all know that weather greatly impacts our life here on the Gulf Coast, especially during hurricane season. This is the Ocean Planet Theater, and it's a giant interactive globe. And it shows and tracks all sorts of weather conditions like water currents, wind, temperature, and clouds. 
This isn't the only exhibit that focuses on hurricanes. There's another interactive exhibit that focuses on storms. It's called Extreme Storms. News 5's meteorologist Melissa Constanzer shows us this feature is hands-on and plenty entertaining. The Extreme Storms exhibit here at the Gulf Quest Museum lets you be a meteorologist or emergency manager as a hurricane gets ready to strike the Gulf Coast. Come with me and look inside. We need your help to figure out if the storm is actually going to come a hurricane. Walking into the exhibit, you find an interactive table in front of you. The table lets you control the show as you join in on the phone. You watch an approaching hurricane cross southern Florida and determine its strength from wind measurements. How strong is the storm currently? Touch the correct category. All right, so winds of 100 miles per hour, it's going to be category two. Category two. Yes. Two miles per hour. Two miles per hour. It's going to be category two. Yes. Next, you have to forecast its track. How strong do you think is most likely? All right, so winds funneling the storm right around. I think it's going to go right towards the Gulf Coast. Yes. Now, you need to determine how large of an area should be evacuated. Look at the three evacuation plans on the table. Which one do you think we should choose? So we want to keep people safe, but we don't want to over-evacuate. I think the best case for this storm, plan B. This seems like the smartest plan. It evacuates everyone at risk while the storm is a hurricane strike. Let's evacuate the Gulf Coast. You see the storm make landfall and view some of the destruction. Finally, you learn just how well your evacuation plan has worked. Rebuilding will still be costly, but loss of life is kept to a minimum. Nice going. So we just successfully evacuated for Hurricane Katrina, but in hindsight, it's a lot easier than when the storm is actually forming and heading closer to land. But this exhibit here gives you an idea of just what meteorologists and emergency managers do to prepare for a storm. Well, we all know that hurricanes are an unfortunate part of life here on the Gulf Coast, and mariners out there in the Gulf have been dealing with the storms for more than 300 years and without radar. Here at Gulf Quest, they have an exhibit called the Crow's Nest, where basically you're that poor sailor who has to go up on the mast during a storm and has to hold on for dear life. The winds will blow in here at 74 miles an hour. That's hurricane speed. So you just have to hold on and hopefully the wind won't blow a man down, as they used to say. The kids are going to love this exhibit. It's not too good on the hair, but it's a lot of fun. and something you'll look forward to seeing here at Gulf Quest. The Gulf Quest National Maritime Museum is just up the river from the Mobile Port Authority. Peter and I had a chance to try out the Ships Ahoy exhibit, which gives visitors an idea of what boat captains in the Port of Mobile deal with on a daily basis. From the pusher boat that transport barges of coal and lumber to dockside, to tugboats that help maneuver large transport ships to their berths. At first glance, it looks pretty easy, but let me tell you, moving these watercraft is a lot harder than it looks. Oh no, you're, oh, you've hit the coal barge. Sorry about that. Gulf Quest is a great place to learn about our port, the ships we make here, and the products we ship in and ship out. Mobile is one of the biggest ports in the United States, and the man in charge says he's glad this museum is now open to teach everyone about the imports, the exports, and the jobs. There aren't many people more excited about the opening of Gulf Quest than the director of the Alabama State Docks, Jimmy Lyons. Being in the business that I am, I love maritime museums, and uh, some would even call me a maritime museum junkie. Lyons has spent decades in charge of the shipping industry here in Mobile. He believes the museum will open up people's eyes to Mobile's bustling port. There are about a hundred over close to 130,000 people in, in Alabama that for some measure rely on their livelihood on the activities of the port. It could be a manufacturer up in Birmingham or a, a sawmill in, in Thomasville or someplace like that or a paper mill in Monroeville. Uh, uh, not, to, not to exclude the people that actually physically work on the waterfront. Lyons believes the museum will bring people downtown to see how vital the port is to the economy. 
one of the best exhibits at Golf Quest isn't an exhibit at all, it's the view. It's spectacular. Up next, what you can see and hear from the observation deck. Visitors will also learn a lot when it comes to the history of Mobile and the Gulf of Mexico, World War II shipbuilding, shipwrecks, and a group known as the Pelican Girls. It's time to take a road trip. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. And if you love the sun, you're going to love Mobile, where Mardi Gras is king. And the accommodations will make you feel like royalty. You can take a little drive, explore Dauphin Island, or explore the past. We're talking the USS Alabama. Check out these big guns. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. Plan yours at alabama.travel. Which one you going to take? Some transitions happen gradually over time, but some can happen in an instant. In the unspoiled beauty of Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, where extraordinary adventures and expansive sugar white beaches stretch on for mile after mile, it only takes a moment before you realize you're in a whole different state. Come, be transformed. This program is brought to you by South Mobile County Tourism. If you're looking for an exciting place to visit, head down to South Mobile County, where adventure comes naturally. This Alabama gym boasts white sandy beaches, fishing, fresh Gulf Coast cuisine, family attractions, and more. On the web, visit SOMO.com to plan your SOMO adventure today. In the 1500s, Spanish explorers first entered the Gulf of Mexico on a voyage of discovery. They found a land full of natural beauty and promise. Today, you can discover the Gulf of Mexico like never before. Explore diverse cultures, discover new worlds, seek new adventures, experience your own journey. Have a maritime and learn more about America's sea than you ever imagined. Navigate history, discover fun. Gulf Quest, adventures away. being the new museum and, and the content that we have and, and really being on the water here, I think that it's going to be very popular. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to welcoming the school groups. And we live in just such a rich area on the Gulf of Mexico and with our rivers here. There's just a lot of opportunities to inspire the kids. All right, Tony, now we're in the part of Gulf Quest that everybody loves shipwrecks. I guess it's not so great if you were on the ship, but everybody loves the idea of finding sunken treasure and getting rich, and we've got some shipwrecks in the Gulf. Yeah, we do, Peter, and this exhibit, El Cazador, tells the story of one of the most important shipwrecks in the Gulf of Mexico. This is known as the shipwreck that changed history. I sailed this warm sea in the year of our Lord, 1784, at the command of Carlos III. In 1784, uh, the El Cazador uh, went down mysteriously off the coast of Louisiana. It was bringing uh, silver coins minted in Mexico to replace the currency, the paper currency that had been devalued due to counterfeiting. It was essential for the Spanish crown to shore up its, its support by uh, replacing the currency. When the ship went down, it destroyed Spain's chances to hold on to the territory. And they subsequently sold it to Napoleon, who then sold it to the United States as part of the Louisiana Purchase. And we now have the United States we have today, in part because of the shipwreck of the El Cazador. So this was a shipwreck that changed history and it went a couple of centuries before it was discovered, right? That's absolutely correct. In, in 1993, a shrimp trawler uh, operated by Jerry Murphy uh, pulled up a load of silver coins off the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, quite a haul for a shrimp trawler. Talk about the glass bottom boat view. Do we get to see this? We took a unique approach with this exhibit in that we didn't want to just tell you about the shipwreck. We wanted to give you an opportunity to look right down onto the shipwreck. So part of the uh, idea behind our glass bottom boat here is to give you that glimpse, but also to tell the story of the El Cazador. So you can see we have a lot of special effects uh, in included in the show, and it really does uh, kind of bring you up to speed on the history of the shipwreck. 
And Tony, we not only see it, but we feel it here in this exhibit. You do. Uh, when the shipwreck actually occurs, you feel that the whole uh, area rumbles a little bit because one of the theories is that the munitions on board the ship exploded, causing the shipwreck, and so th we've replicated that. This exhibit is called the Pelican Girls, and I really like this one. The first time I saw it here at the museum, it's set up like a room from the early 1700s here in Mobile. But let's start out by talking about who are the Pelican Girls? Well, the Pelican Girls were 19 young women that were brought over from France uh, in 1704. They were uh, brought from convents and orphanages. And they were brought here to marry, obviously sight unseen, the French Canadian colonists that were in Mobile. So they may have thought they were going somewhere really extraordinary, uh, yeah. but they got here and Mobile was just being settled. That's right, that's right. And, and probably it was extraordinary, but not exactly what they envisioned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they were thinking that it was was um, a much more um, civilized, you know, if you can, if you were society. And uh, when they got here, it was, um, you know, according to their stories and on their terms, more uncivilized. And this room, tell us about what we're looking at here. Well, this room is what a room would have looked like after they were married. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when they got here, it was, um, it, you know, it, this would not have been there. But once they married, this is supposed to look like a room that they may have created in their own homes. Tell us about this dress. Well, this dress represents one of the dresses that the women would have worn. The most interesting feature of this room is this, what I call the magic mirror. Well, it is a magic mirror. You get to hear two stories. One of the, the madam that brought the, the girls over, the young girls over. You get to hear her story about how she married them off and how she selected the men that they were to marry. And then the other one is the story of one of the Pelican girls herself, where she tells the story through this magic mirror. All right. Well, let's Let's open one of them. Sure. This is so interesting. It looks like a jewelry box. You open it and watch what happens. I was a Swazi chosen to bring 19 girls from France to Mobile to marry the colonists. Mesdames, Messieurs, Mesdames, Messieurs, s'il vous plaît, don't be frightened. I must speak to you. Please hear my story. Perhaps you would think it is a sad story, but I do not. It is a story of a journey I made for my country, for my king, and for my God. It's interesting, maybe a little creepy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, there are some people who are going to say, ooh, no, 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 I don't want to see that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I really like it. I think yeah. it's interesting. And what's also interesting is the fact that there are many people living here in Mobile today who may be a descendant of the Pelican Girls. Absolutely. And, and we, you know, as we've shown this exhibit to people, we've heard that from several. And I would love to find one descendant. I mean, what a great story that would be. All of the exhibits here at the Gulf Quest were custom made for this place from people from all over the country. But you won't find anything like these anywhere else in the world. For example, this one's called Beneath the Bay. Basically, it's a big map of the Delta and the Bay. It has various buttons you can press to find out where certain historic events have happened. Like, I press this one here and it shows 300 sites where there are shipwrecks beneath the bay. We have 90 individual uh, interactive exhibits, displays, theaters, and simulators in the building, 88 of which are original to Gulf Quest, and the other two we're partnering with other museums, and that's why, you know, we're, they're not original to Gulf Quest, but the, the important thing is, is that the, the exhibits are unique, and the exhibits are, cannot be found at any other museum in the world, and uh, they're all uh, relaying information that's critical to Mobile's maritime history, to the Gulf of Mexico's maritime history and in that respect they're one of a kind one thing you want to make sure you do when you come to golf quest is to come up here to the top to the observation deck there's definitely a nice breeze and an even nicer view this is really one of the only places in mobile that's open to the public where you get a view like this of the mobile river Many of us have lived in Mobile our whole life and never seen the hustle and bustle of the activity up close and personal. Right here you can see the mouth of the Mobile River and this is where all the big ships, the barges, the tugboats will make their way into the port. Looking south you can see the container terminal and of course we've learned here at Gulf Quest that containerized shipping started in Mobile. 
Then there's BAE Systems, and of course they are busy repairing a lot of the big ships that make their way into the port. One of our big employers here, our biggest employer right now is Austell, and you can see the high-speed vessel, that's one of the two ships being made at Austell. Almost directly across from the Maritime Museum, you can see Austell building the LCS ships. In fact, there's the USS Gabriel Giffords, they just christened that ship this summer. Now, these are the fourth and fifth LCS produced at Austell. You can see all the activity at the state docks and then all the way up to the Cochran Bridge. It's a great vantage point to see the city and one of the busiest ports in the U.S. Come check it out. There are so many fun exhibits here at the Gulf West National Maritime Museum, but there's one that's sure to be a lot of folks' favorite. It'll be the favorites. It might make them a little bit seasick, but we'll take the helm when we come back and find out if it makes our list of the top five things at Gulf Quest. And there are exhibits which take visitors below the Gulf of Mexico's surface. One lets you explore the Gulf floor in 3D. It's time to take a road trip. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. And if you love the sun, you're gonna love Mobile, where Mardi Gras is king. And the accommodations will make you feel like royalty. You can take a little drive, explore Dauphin Island, or explore the past. We're talking the USS Alabama. Check out these big guns. Alabama's got a hundred road trips. Plan yours at alabama.travel. Which one you gonna take? Some transitions happen gradually over time, but some can happen in an instant. In the unspoiled beauty of Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, where extraordinary adventures and expansive sugar white beaches stretch on for mile after mile, it only takes a moment before you realize you're in a whole different state. Come, be transformed. This program is brought to you by South Mobile County Tourism. If you're looking for an exciting place to visit, head down to South Mobile County, where adventure comes naturally. This Alabama gym boasts white sandy beaches, fishing, fresh Gulf Coast cuisine, family attractions, and more. On the web, visit SOMO.com to plan your SOMO adventure today. <laughs> Seven red. Whatever, dude. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. I gave you that number. No, bro. We're going to go eat. You with me? Come on. Where are we going? You're doing great. Everything is so... It's so clean, it's so well put together, everything is visually attractive, but then there's all of the interesting things and the educational things. Um, there's so many nooks and crannies and everything is filled with something good to look at. Have you ever wanted to be the captain of a ship or drive a speedboat full throttle? You can do that right here. It's called Take the Helm and it promises to be one of the most popular things at Golf Quest. Impressive is a great word to describe the exhibit, Take the Helm. This view is from Mobile Bay. There's the Dauphin Island Bridge. Visitors feel very much like the captain of a ship and have many options for their ride on the water. It feels like I actually get to drive the boat, and it's really fun. They can choose their vessel, such as a Coast Guard rescue boat, a tugboat, or a cargo ship. They can also pick the time of day and the weather conditions. The simulator is designed to handle, look, and sound like a real ship. The view is outstanding, too. It looks just like the Mobile River, downtown Mobile, and Mobile Bay. Take the Helm is the same technology used to train actual pilots. The gauges, the controls, are just like they are in a real boat or ship. Don't do what I'm doing, please. This exhibit is located on the top deck, and visitors should make sure they have a chance no. to take the helm. No, go! And I crashed. Bye. From piloting a ship above the water to going below the waves, in this exhibit, you can be 
become a deep explorer. This allows you to go 2,000 feet below the surface of the Gulf of Mexico in a mini submersible or a mini submarine. Joining me now is Diana Brewer. And Diana, so few people have the opportunity to explore this other world. Well, this will give them the opportunity. There are, one, there are six different dive trails to choose from, including the Flower Garden Banks, which has the largest coral reef in the continental U.S. So basically, you're in charge. You're driving and you're, uh, it's like a video game. So you move your, your little mini submersible um, through the waters. Approaching dive site. You approach a dive site, you press this trigger, and a, and a beautiful video shows up right there on the screen. All the while you're looking at this 180 degree screen. Wow, above so you. you can see different types of coral, and I love the fact that you can see all of these exotic fish. You can, and, and there's even a couple of uh, sunken ships that you can go explore. So it really, it's really truly amazing. It's beautiful on the screen. I mean, it's just, there's so much. And and to, to really have the time to sit and, and try to see all six of the dive trails would really take you a long time. So you're just going to have to come back again and again. Thanks, Diana. So you will definitely need to see this exhibit and dive in. Gulf Quest has activities for people of all ages, even the junior mariners in your family. There's a kids area that puts them right in the middle of the action. They can drive a boat or play dress up. We do have an early childhood area we call Junior Mariners. It's designed for kids ages 2 through 8 because we know they, they really learn through play activity. Um, so, and for families coming in, they're going to have children in all age groups. So we needed something for everyone. There are so many great things to do and see here at Golf Quest. So what are our favorites? It was hard, but we narrowed it down to our top five. At number five, Discovery Hull. This area is brimming with history, but we like the way the history came to life. We enjoyed learning the history of the Spanish ship El Cazador while sitting in the glass bottom boat. We also found the Pelican Girls exhibit really interesting. A lot of people enjoy a good ghost story. The best part was when the Pelican Girl came to life on the magic mirror. Number four, the view. There's nowhere else in Mobile to get a view like you can at the Gulf Quest Museum from several balconies and observation decks. The observation deck facing the Mobile River is a fantastic place to see all of the activity happening on the river. Number three, the Deep Explorer exhibit. There's something magical about exploring 2,000 feet under the Gulf of Mexico. A shipwreck isn't something just in stories. You can see one for yourself as you navigate your small submarine to sink below the surface. Number two, the Crow's Nest. Be careful, this exhibit nearly blew my socks off. This puts you in the middle of a hurricane. You get to feel firsthand the power of hurricane force winds. We've seen the aftermath of many storms, but to actually be in one? Wow! Just get ready for a bad hair day. And number one, take the helm. This exhibit was our favorite because we liked how you become a tugboat captain or drive a really fast boat. This exhibit feels so real that you can get dizzy if you let your boat get out of control or you choose to pilot stormy seas. This type of simulator is even used to train boat pilots. You can forget you're just playing a game and get lost in the ride for sure. These are our favorites, but come to Gulf Quest and make your own list. We hope you've enjoyed your tour of Gulf Quest, the National Maritime Museum of the Gulf of Mexico. And Devin, you know, in half an hour, we've really only scratched the surface of all the things you can see and do here. So many things to see and do. So bring your family, have lunch, make a day of it. And I will tell you, you'll gain a better appreciation of why so many people are drawn to the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can see Gulf Quest for yourself beginning September 26th.